Finding the perfect handheld is an incredibly difficult task. Each one has a flaw, which in turn gives it a unique personality. Today, we will review a very nice system. We first saw photographs of this on social media, and then we saw the decals from Sakura Modding, which look amazing. The final straw was this Miu Mini in space. I had to get one. Point. Let's see what's inside. One snip with the scissors. Careful with those, they are extremely pointy. Like my nipples. It's a case from Miu. The colors, charcoal black with red accents, and it feels a bit like suede. Well, let's open it up, shall we? Inside we have an instruction manual, a very small handheld in this cute sleeve, a USB-C power cable, this will be for charging, and something else is in here, a micro SD card adapter. So the manual looks a bit like this, in both English as well as Chinese on the opposite side. Let's take this baby out of the wrapper. We can just slide it out like so. Nicely done like a pro. First impressions, this looks rather nice. Super Nintendo style buttons. We have one speaker down the bottom, select and start, and the classic Nintendo style D-pad. We have a power switch, as well as three LEDs. Here's a volume roller. Then underneath we have the audio jack, micro SD card slot, and the USB-C socket. You can come suck it at my massage parlor. The micro SD card is 32 gigabytes, with no branding. Around the back we have L and R buttons, two for each, and those in the center are slightly raised. Inside the battery compartment, there's a 2000 milliamp lithium ion battery. As you have access to this, once the battery snuffs it, you should be able to change it out. Before we continue, let's unpeel this thing. Nice! The buttons feel a lot like Smarties, light but firm. And the D-pad? Yeah, it feels pretty good. Not squishy, not clicky either. The center buttons are kind of awkward to get to, but it's doable. The only system you'll need these for is probably PlayStation 1. We're going to put it next to the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. In comparison, the screen is slightly smaller, but the unit itself is far more compact. We can say the same thing for the RG351V. Obviously, these systems are far more powerful, but this little Miu is just so compact. It can fit in my wallet. Almost. It's a dual core processor at 1.2 GHz, 128 megs of DDR3, and a 2.8 inch IPS screen at 480p. Not bad. So as we turn it on, let's check the boot time. 1 to 3 o'clock for a clock rock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock rock. I am John Luke, rock hard massage man. Ah yes. So boot up time with the stock software is around 14 seconds. I'm greeted to this menu. This is the first time we turned it on, but let's check the history. A very interesting games list indeed. Let's check out Adrian's favorite game. So while I was playing this game, I had a massive grin on my face. Just picking up and playing this, it was just so much fun. To get to the quick menu, we push this button here. Then we can save state, load state, and go to this emulator's native menu. We've seen this screen before on the PowKitty Q90. We can only change the scale of the screen to either be smaller, the same as earlier, or to stretch to full size. From that quick menu, we can also quit out and check the rest of the UI. Next section is for favorites. We can add games here by highlighting one and then pushing the button in the center. We have quite a few systems here. Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Master System, Wonders One, and many more. Let's see what we have out of the box. First up is Famicom or Nintendo. The game list is packed with Japanese or translated to English ROMs. Trying a few of these translations uncovers a throne of lies. The best thing you can do is play arcade games. It's quite obvious from the get-go that this screen is pretty fantastic. The blacks are really dark, and the colors are nice and vibrant. And if we check the native menu here, it seems to be RetroArch. Plenty of options to play with. The Game Boy list is a big mix of everything, but listen to this. 
<laughs> yeah, the very, very high pitch. Ah! This is exactly the same thing we had with the Q90. The more popular games will work fine, but to fix that sound issue, we need to change emulator. For the Game Boy Advance, we have mostly USA releases. Even though the screen is 4.3, this looks and plays fantastic. The Mega Drive Genesis list is full of releases around the world. But if you listen closely, the audio is a few milliseconds off. We look through the menu, but there is no easy fix here. There is an alternative solution later on in the video. Here's the Super Nintendo games list, and playing the games is no problem. Especially when you have these coloured buttons. The PlayStation list is quite short, but there is sound delay here, much like the Mega Drive. The game here seems to be running full speed, so the system is quite capable. We again checked through the options, but there was nothing. Next up, Master System. There's a mixed list, and the games are running rather well. The Wonder Swan color list is mostly Japanese, and there are no issues here. Same goes for PC Engine, and this runs flawlessly. The Neo Geo Pocket has a mixed list. It runs well, but we're stuck with a stretch screen. The games list for the Atari 2600 is more or less a ROM dump, and with the IPS screen, get ready for some bright gaming. Same for the 7800, with multiple versions of the same game. Choplifter is pretty fantastic. Before moving on to arcade games, there is FF Play a video play we can use to watch Postman Pat. Next up, Arcade. Or how about we don't, because none of these games actually run from the main menu. We tried CPS 1, 2 and 3, and then the FBN list, but nothing worked. It's quite likely that they used the wrong ROM set, but if we go into the main 2010 menu, we can actually play some of these games. Games in the main plus menu also worked. Finally, the Neo Geo list. Surprisingly, nothing worked. But if we move to the RetroArch section, we have a few more emulators we can use. Usually for these kind of systems, they'd use the FBA 2012 ROM set. So if you can load it from this emulator, we should be good to go. As this is RetroArch, we can push this button Go to Options, and then flip on Vertical Mode. We can also change controls and screen settings too, if we wish. But doing this we can play CPS1 games, CPS2 games, as well as CPS3 games. You could also add the correct ROMs if you wished, or try some of the other emulators. Next up is the Apps menu. A few things are installed here, like this Chinese RPG, this other Chinese RPG, a clock, Streets of Rage Remake. I would like to take Blaze for some ice cream, caramel ribbon. A tool to free memory. And then we have settings. We can alter brightness, screen color, language, there's a good variety. 31 if I am not mistaken, yummy in my tum. Key mapping if you want to change them about and a good variety of themes. There's even one called Pornhub, but we're not going to show that for obvious reasons. Other options in this menu are Hibernate, Fixes, Factory Reset and Device Info. In order to fix our problems regarding the Game Boy, Mega Drive and PlayStation, we're going to install Onion. This is custom software available for free on GitHub. There is a very simple to follow guide and we recommend doing this on a new, reliable microSD. If your memory card is kind of dodgy, it may corrupt your data and save games. To install Onion, first download this file, then extract it to a FAT32 formatted microSD card. We just need this temp update file and just drag it across. Once done, right click on your drive and then eject. Insert into the handheld, then turn on and wait. It'll take about a minute or so, so we can look at how pretty it is. We're then greeted to the manual. 
Now we're given the question, what do we want to install? Of course, the Amiga and the Amstrad. If you want to add more later, you can do so from the menu. So once it's done its stuff, press red. Make sure it's turned off properly by checking the LEDs at the top. Then take out the micro SD, insert it to your computer to add your games. You can actually copy across the BIOS and ROMs from the stock micro SD to this one. We suggest finding your own ROMs and then checking if they're compatible with the Onion Wiki. If you wanted to add thumbnails to your UI, we can use Scraper. Make sure you have a free account ready and click the plus to add new system. As we've added Neo Geo, we're going to select it and then press OK. Then we're going to help it find the ROMs on our micro SD. ROMs, Neo Geo, and then press OK. We can repeat this for every system we have on the device. Then we'll have a nice list on the left. Click on All Systems, and then Media. We only need one image to show, so we'll click one and then remove it. So now we're going to use the arrows at the bottom to select which image type we wish to have. It's probably better to have a tall image for this, so we're going to choose Box 2D. In the Output folder, remove Media Images to have IMSC with a capital I. So now this is all set up, we can push the play button at the bottom right, and this will grab all of the images for the games. This will take a few minutes, but it's well worth it. Moving back to the MiU now, with thumbnails, this looks way better. Just be aware that if you use screenshots, especially in landscape mode, they'd look tiny. The sound issues we have with Game Boy are all fixed. The same applies for Mega Drive and PlayStation 1. No more delay. As this uses the PCSX rearmed emulator, some games like Ridge Racer Revolution will run slightly slow. But that's definitely in the minority. We can also have more luck with Neo Geo and other arcade games. And one of my favorite features of Onion, tap this menu button once, it saves the state, and it gives you a list of the last 10 games played. Select one of these and it'll jump you right into the place you left it. To get to the RetroArch menu, you push the center button and select. And to exit to the main game list, we hold the center button until it vibrates. Sounds a lot like Beverly. So let's see some of the new systems we've added. Here's Amstrad CPC, Rainbow Islands. And some Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 on the Amiga. At default, the aspect ratio is slightly off, but we can fix this in RetroArch. Go down to zoom mode, then select either medium or large. And this one runs at full speed. And gym power? No chance. With performance being similar to a Raspberry Pi 3, we could try using frame skip to make this playable. But let's see what this unit can push out. 32x. Scum VM. A little awkward on the D-pad, but this runs great. The Board of Doom. Tap the power button at the top to turn on sleep mode. Tap again to wake it up. If you want to shut it down, hold it in until it vibrates. I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. The MiU Mini V2 has a lot going for it. It looks great, plays straight out of the box, and it's a very affordable handheld. There are not many things you can say bad about this, except for the stock firmware and the garbage micro SD. If you're on the lookout for an 8 to 16 bit handheld, we can easily recommend this. With its fast boot time and the use of safe states, it's perfect for on the toilet. Or if you want to be part of the MiU Mini community, you can just take photographs of them, like in cake and in the garden. Oh, that's where you went. Come on. As I play Blazing Star, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. You guys are fantastic and keep us moving and grooving. If you'd like to support our work, please consider joining. We have a Discord and John has a massage parlor. Business is banging like a rapper, the rapper and son of fire. Kick punch like this video, it's all in the mind.
It sure is, John. This has been Emi Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!